and we sit down and we have ice cream at two in the morning with thieves turning over on their own friends. So people go around and they prey on small dealerships. I'm a small guy, we got you know, me and two guys running the place. So a lot of times a customer comes in, they wanna test drive a car. We don't have a little lot boy to ride around with every single test driver. So it's always this, this challenge of qualifying your customer. Do we send this guy out on their own or do we babysit this person? So literally this is the week of my 50th birthday, right? 50th birthday, I'm wanting to have a nice week. You know, don't have any really big plans per se, but you know, I'm thinking about, you know, maybe we'll do something. So I've got this like $25,000 Ford truck, nice four wheel drive, nice truck. And these two women come in, right? And they want to test drive this truck. And I asked them the questions and they're like, well, we want to take it to our mechanic and have it looked over. I can't really deny you that, right? And it's a great scam because I can't tie myself up for hours to go with you on an inspection. I mean, people, I want people to have my cars inspected. I want you to know what you're buying, for better or worse, you know? Every car's not perfect. It, maybe we didn't even catch something in some shop. What, I'd rather them, I'd rather you buying that knowing that there's an oil leak or this or that, and you know it, and we're all good. So they come in, they look like the, the buyer for the truck. I know buyers, and you, you kind of get a sense for the type of person that's gonna buy the particular car. And here's the crazy thing about it, is I had somebody that looked at the truck that Monday, right? And they'd actually called me up like that day before and said, hey, we're gonna go ahead and take that truck. You know, no deposit or anything, but yeah, I think we're gonna buy that truck. Well, that happens like 10 times a week, right? They said they're gonna buy the truck and they don't show up. So, you know, so I'm not gonna like, you're, you're gonna come in and say, you know, I'm not gonna show you this truck because somebody said they were gonna buy the truck. I'm gonna show it to them. And then if they're actually looking at maybe buying the truck, I might call the first person and say, hey, you know, I try to be as fair as possible, but I literally had this truck sold, asking price. So the truck leaves, you know, but something just still didn't quite feel right. They left and, and I go back and, and I go look on the cameras. Because what I'll do too is somebody wants to test drive a car, I'll see what they drove up in. You know what I mean? Did they walk in off the sidewalk? So I go back to the cameras because I'm like, eh, something just kind of weird. So I go look at the cameras and they took off in the truck and then the other person got in the car that they came in and it left too. And I went, oh crap. So I come back inside and uh, one of the guys says, hey, that, that Ford truck's back. And I'm like, oh, thank God. You know, because I just had this weird feeling about it. So I'm like walking back out there and the Ford truck was back. And then I saw the Ford truck leaving out the back with the car they came in, both cars leaving. So they came back to get their other car and then shot out the back. And so literally I saw them leaving. I run back inside and I dial 911, you know, and I said, hey, I just got a car stolen. You know, and they're like, well, you gave them the keys. Yeah, but they're not coming back. So I give them the picture. It was a Subaru they were driving. Well, that car's stolen too, you know? They're just going around picking up cars. So the police come in there and they're like, well, we'll file a report and uh, we'll let you know if we find the truck. Luckily, I had this on my floor plan. And I'm like, okay, I had this on my floor plan. This is the reason that sometimes I'll pay higher interest to cover a truck. So guess what? Loophole. You gave him the keys. It's not stolen because you handed them the keys. We're not covering the truck. I cannot take a $25,000 hit. I mean, we're small. That is a crippling loss. So I have to do this on my own. Like the cops, they filed a report, but now I have to become an investigator. So I go to social media, okay? And I've got the video, I've got screenshots. And I'm like, you know, I've never experienced anything like this before. And they got me good. And the driver's license was fake. She had, I got her driver's license. It was fake. I'm like, literally false identification. I had nothing on these people. And when they were in the shop, they're smiling at the cameras. 
Their face is right there on the camera. They're just smiling at the cameras. I can tell you about the cameras, they don't care. I drive around, I do this, but you know, this is a big city, half a million people. How are you gonna find a white Ford 4x4 truck? So I go to Facebook, there's a page called Stolen Vehicles of Wichita. And half the people on that page are the thieves. So I'm like, okay, these guys are all about money. And I'm looking for this thing for three days. I put reward. I put stolen, okay? And I didn't put the amount because it's like that question, right? How much are you going to pay me? You know what I mean? You put an amount there like, no, nah, that ain't high enough. I'll keep the truck. So I put stolen cash reward, pictures of the truck, so on and so forth. So this is like a Friday night. I forget if my birthday was like Saturday or Sunday. I had plans. You know, we were probably just gonna go to dinner. We didn't have any big plans, but this truck has been missing all week long. Literally 10 o'clock at night, my wife calls me, says, I just got a weird phone call that says, I know where your truck's at, but they wouldn't tell her anything. You know, they were really, really sketchy. She basically told them to call me. Because then they called me. He says, I know where your truck's at. And I'm like, okay. They're like, well, what's the reward? And I go, uh, $500, you know? And they're like, uh, okay, well, come over and pick me up and I'll take you to it. And I'm like, no, it's not gonna happen. So I screenshotted their, their phone number, right? I didn't wanna scare them away because I knew just experience and instinct that this was legit. And I was trying to get them to tell me where this was. And, uh, and I'm like, look, I don't care. Like, I, I just want my truck back. I, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I'm not even looking to get you in trouble. Even the people that stole it, I just want my truck back. And then I got off the phone with them and then I called the police. And I said, I got this person, I got the phone number. And they're just like, well, we can't do anything. You know, they're like, no, we can't do anything. So I tell the people, look, I, I want you to get your money. You know, I, I, you know, I appreciate this. And, uh, and so tell me where the truck is, right? I guarantee you, I'll bring you the cash tonight. I'm not gonna like not pay you. I'm happy to pay you. So I finally got the address of where the truck was. They told me exactly where the truck was. So then I'm still in communication. This is midnight now. And they told me the location of the truck. I call the police and I say, this is where my truck's at, stolen truck. Go there right now. I'm on one side of town and I'm headed, you know, on the other side of town. It's about 12 a.m. We get there. The police are already there, right? And there's my truck. It's back. It's in an apartment complex on the west side of town and it's backed into the bushes. So there's no tag, right? But the cops can't open the truck or touch the truck, you know? So this is a late model Ford truck. It's got that sink, you know, where it's got the location services. Again, these people know what they're doing. So they back the truck in and they unhook the battery and they covered up the VIN number in the dash. See, so there was no proof that they, they couldn't verify that that was my truck. They were blocking it in. So I show up, I go over there, the door is unlocked. So I open the door and there it is. And I open, you know, so then they verify the VIN number okay, that this is actually my truck. And, and I don't have the keys, right? Because they have the keys. And this person was just trying to sell this truck for like 500 bucks. But then, because of the heat that I put on them, because of the reward on that Facebook page, right? I put the heat on them and they got scared and they parked the truck because everybody's looking for this truck because there's a cash reward. So I call my wrecker service. They come over there, four wheel drive truck, and it's, it's hard to get out. I'm out there for, you know, it's, it's a couple hours. We get over to my shop, I open up the gate, and we put the truck inside the yard. So I retrieve my truck, okay? And I call, it's two in the morning. My mother-in-law had made me homemade strawberry ice cream for my birthday. So I called these people up, I've got your reward money, I'm not coming to your house. So there's that, well, there's a quick trip by our house. That's a safe meeting place. So literally, I'm so happy I have my truck back that I take my birthday ice cream, my homemade strawberry ice cream with me. I meet these people at two in the morning on an outside quick trip picnic table 
and I give them their $500 and we sit down and we have ice cream at two in the morning with thieves turning over on their own friends to get my truck back. And I left them the ice cream. I said, it's yours. Thank you. Enjoy the ice cream. That's the weirdest. That's the craziest experience, you know, but I got my truck back and then they come in. I had the key company come in, reprogram keys, make me new keys, you know, new keys. Because my first customer came in that Friday to buy the truck. This is on Friday before I had recovered it. And I said, somebody test drove it and it's stolen. And then I called him up on Saturday and I said, are you still interested in that truck? The crazy thing is there wasn't a scratch on it. They parked it like immediately. And I took like $1,500 off the truck. He bought it and he, I think he still has that truck today. Premier Financial Services makes it easier and more affordable than you could possibly imagine to own your dream car. Their simple lease is one of the most powerful tools in the world of exotic car financing. You get all the benefits like the tax savings and the low payments of a lease with all the additional benefits that you'd normally find in a traditional finance arrangement. You can build up equity, you can pay it off early, you can trade in and out of cars because you get a very clear and easy to understand amortization table to understand what your payoff will be any month throughout your term. And all the while, the amazing team from Premier Financial Services will be right there to help you along the way. They've been supporters of the VenWiki channel now for five years in a row, so we can't thank them enough for that, but mostly we're thankful for the fact that they can help you make it easier than ever to own your dream car. Check them out now.